Hello and welcome to the nomenclature of acids. Um, we'll start off with some fundamentals of acids. I have a picture of a lemon here. I guess we'll figure out what for. Um, two ways acids are named depending on the way they're built. Okay, First there's binary acids that consist of a hydrogen ion and an anion that doesn't contain oxygen. So usually they're going to be binary, like hydrochloric acid. Hydro, hydrobromic acid, hydroiodic acid. But there's also hydrocyanic acid, which is hydrogen bound to the cyanide anion. Um, there's a lot of qualifications that go into something being an acid. For now, um, when we see hydrogen beginning a molecule, that's not something like water. Um, we're going to call it an acid. Okay. Uh, the other type of acid is going to be an oxyl acid, which are hydrogen ion and a polyatomic anion containing oxygen. Oxo acids are often ternary. Uh, which we discussed in the previous video, which means there's three elements present. Um, and that just be, basically means a hydrogen is bound to a polyatomic ion. This is a little table of some common acids. Now you're familiar with the possibility of these first five, but then we have acetic. And acetic acid we've seen written more than one way before. It's, it's hydrogen bound to the acetate anion. Um, this is the hydrogen ion, and this is often the way we see acetate written. Um, CHO232 um, with a negative one charge. Uh, but it's also, and in, in this stems from the just the, the notion of carboxylic acids, which is a topic for organic chemistry, that this is the way it gets written, CH3COO minus, which is the same thing as that. And consequently, you see acetic acid written, CH3COOH. And this is the hydrogen that makes it an acid. Citric acid is another type of acid that's got... Um, basically three carbon links longer, um, uh, but it's a similar type of acid, a carboxylic acid to acetic acid, as is lactic acid. And then there's boric acid, which is the borate ion bound to hydrogen. There are many, many more acids than this. These are just some basics. What we should see, though, is that these are all oxo acids, where this is a binary acid. So to name a binary acid, we start with the prefix hydro, okay? After hydro, we find the root of the anion that it's bound to. That's chlorine. The root of chlorine is chlor. So it will be hydro, chlor, and then the rest of the rule is we add ick at the end of that word, and then of course we call it an acid. So hydrochloric acid. HF... Uh, fluorine is your anion, or fluoride is your anion, and the root of fluoride is fluor, so it's hydrofluoric acid. And that's true for any binary acid. To name an oxo acid, it gets a bit more complicated. First, you should note that your, your acid contains oxygen and it's ternary. It's got three elements there. And you should additionally notice that hydrogen is bound to a polyatomic ion that we're familiar with. In this case, we have nitrate. If it ends in ATE, we're going to change that ATE ending to ick. Okay? Notice I haven't said anything about hydro. That's because we do not use hydro for oxo acids. So, I'm just going to take nitrate and I'm going to change eight to ick and it becomes nitric acid. So this is a different oxo acid, carbonic acid. Um, carbonic acid is carbonate ion. Carbonate, carbonic acid. And I'm going to write carbonate here and show how that ending changes. Since this is an oxo acid, H2CO3, I know that this, this polyatomic anion is carbonate, and since it was 8 ending, I change that to ick, and then add the word acid. Cute mnemonic for this is, I ate something icky. To name an oxo acid uh, that ends in ITE, we're going to change the ITE to OUS and add the word acid. So we should note, and when we see HNO2, that we have a oxo acid ternary with nitrite as your anion. Nitrite. And then we're going to change ITE to OUS. 
and then add the word acid. So that's nitrous acid. Notice it's O-U-S. Okay. Finally, we have HClO2. You should note this is chlorite, the chlorite ion. Chlorite, we take the I-T-E off. We change it to O-U-S, and that becomes chlorous acid. Again, whenever you have an oxo acid, we do not use the prefix hydro at all. We simply go straight to that root. We change eight to ic or ite to O-U-S, and then add the word acid, and that's it. And then the mnemonic for this one will be the snake bite was poisonous. Silly. Special notes about sulfur and phosphorus. Now, we've already dealt with this a little bit before. We're going to deal with it again, and it will be a topic for the rest of the, your chemistry lives. You'll always note this strangeness, but let's put it out there so you're clear with it. As you know, the ions for sulfur and phosphorus are sulfide and phosphide. Alas. Sorry, Shakespeare. When the anion of acid contains sulfur or phosphorus, the roots are sulfur and phosphor, not sulfur and phosphor. Okay? So... Note that there's a difference between when you make the ion, just that single ion for sulfide and phosphide, it, we just use that SULF and the, the PHOSPH, okay? But when we're working with the acid version, we are going to use the full sulfur and phosphor, okay? So what does that mean to you? That means that H2SO4 is, this is sulfate, so we're going to call it sulfuric acid, not sulfic acid. H3PO4 phosphate is going to become phosphoric acid, not phosphic acid. The rea reality is, is I don't have a great reason for this to be. It just is. And so I wrote here, sometimes life isn't fair. I apologize that we have this, this inconsistency among the style of naming, but this is the convention. We just need to get used to it. Now, the good news is, is on a test or quiz, we're never going to ask you, is it sulfuric or sulfic? This is something we need to know implicitly that the correct way is sulfuric acid and phosphoric acid. The correct way is sulfide and phosphide. Okay, we won't quiz you on that little that little uh, inconsistency. So how do we write formulas for acid? It's quite simple. We're going to be given um, a name, and we're going to have to decode it. When it begins with hydro, the great news is you know it's hydrogen bound to bromine, and that's all. So we need to determine the anion. We're going to have hydrogen ion as our cation always with acids. And our anion is going to be um, our, our uh, uh, root word. So when we have hydrobromic acid, we know it's a binary acid, hydrogen bound to bromide. Now, you notice I'm using ion terms here. Remember, acids don't contain metals. So acids, by definition, are covalent. But we don't use the covalent naming convention because they are different from normal covalent compounds in that many acids uh, are going to produce lots of ions in solution. And all acids, by definition, produce at least some hydrogen ions. So though they form ions in solution, we consider them to be covalent, okay, because there are no ionic bonds in an acid, though ions form. I know it's hard to, to stomach. We'll get further into it when we get into bonding later in the year. But for now, we need to know that acids are covalent molecules. So anyway, we have our, our hydrogen bound to bromide. So we simply need to match charges, and this is quite simple, HBr. Acetic acid is hydrogen bound to acetate. And acetate is uh, C2H3O2 or CH, CH3COO. Uh, and we're going to bind hydrogen to it, and so we get HC2H3O2. You could also write it CH3COOH. Both are correct. Phosphorus acid. Okay. Now, OUS means it used to be ite. The snake bite was poisonous. So that's phosphite bound to hydrogen. So I have hydrogen and the phosphite anion, PO3, with a 3 minus charge, which means that we should find H3. P O three. So for to review for binary acids, you're simply going to bind hydrogen to the anion from the root word brome, and for ternary and um, oxo acids, you're going to find the root from uh, that suffix. Ic becomes eight, so that's acetate. O U S becomes ite, so that's phosphite. 
and that's going to be your anion bound to hydrogen. Again, with all acids, they begin with that hydrogen ion, and then they're bound to some anion, either a monovalent nonmetal ion or a polyatomic anion based on that suffix. Please make sure you're taking high quality notes. If you have further questions, we will see you in class. This concludes the video for acids.